What's good, Eric? Hello? Sorry. <laughs> Forgot to turn my to turn my headset on sometimes. Yeah. That will do it. Hello. Hello. How's it going up there, Reza? Not bad. Not bad. It's sunny. I don't like it, but people <laughs> seems to be really digging the vibe of the sun. Oh. Nathan. Easy. Hello, I'm Sarah Zah. All right. Hey. I'll give it another minute or two. Uh, somebody want to volunteer to take some notes in the meeting document today? I think it will be pretty brief. I'll take I got second. that. Yeah, I'm gonna. Cool. Yep, yep. <laughs> Thank you, Reza. Um, I guess we can get started then. Um, just as general release check-in, I think there's just a couple things to talk about. So we've got a 3.27.4 release that just came out yesterday, I believe. Um, that mostly includes a number of eBPF fixes and a Golang update to address some CVEs that were identified. Um, I think the most notable one to call out was, uh, in terms of fixes was um, there was an XDP error that a lot of users were seeing on some kernels that resulted in Felix doing a bunch of unnecessary work and using excess CPU. Um, I believe the fix there was just to update the version of BPF tool that we shipped. Um, and so that's that's been rolled out. Um, most of these fixes are also going into the 328 branch and should be in a 328.1 release, which uh, I believe we're scheduling to cut uh, on uh, early next week. Um, so that's that. Uh, 329 is in the works. Um, I actually just merged. The feature that I've been working on for that, which is NF tables compatibility. Um, so the first part of that is in and working on additional testing and uh, improvements to that now. Um, I think we don't yet have a release date for that still. It's probably um, in the fall though. I think uh, latest update was that we're planning to like get a code freeze um, in the September time frame, and then probably releasing in October for three twenty nine. Eric, was that confusion at me or something else? Uh, at the Google Doc, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was trying to indent stuff, and it's not doing what I expect with the shift tab. Cool. As long as it's not me saying something crazy. Um, I think that's mostly it on release updates. Uh, 
Anybody else have anything to add to that before we move on? Nathan, was there anything you wanted to talk about on the VPP side? Um, not a whole lot either. Um, I think the main uh, the main changes. So we we are mostly focusing on let's say uh, adoption and use cases right now. So not a whole lot of um, development yet uh, towards VP. There, there is a plan to um, merge the work that has gone towards uh, performance optimization that has been long standing uh, in VPP. Uh, not sure when we will be able to get to that. Uh, hopefully sometime during the summer uh, with the POs and um, probably more cycles throughout this. Um, the other thing that we did was bring back the YAML, YAML based install of Calico VPP, or at least document that because we were asked to maintain that for people who, uh, for some reason, wanted to skip the operator. Uh, we still recommend uh, operator as the default way to install, but, uh, um, but so we did bring back this. And uh, last thing, an interesting um, ask that we encountered was uh, someone wanting to make, to change the configuration for VP on different nodes. And um, the suggestion, so something that I thought about was maybe we should, we could uh, leverage the FedEx config to some extent. I don't know if there is a mechanism to uh, because my understanding is it has support for um, for per node uh, configuration mm -hmm. shadowing, um, and the question was: Is there a way to add opaque or like blob uh, config to that? Uh, how hard would this be? Would this be acceptable? That's a good question. Um, I tend to be pretty wary of adding opaque blobs of configuration mm -hmm. to uh to apis like that just because i think they're pretty big foot guns and they're hard yeah. for us to mm -hmm. to make sure that we're not exposing either people to to problems that may yeah. hurt themselves mm -hmm. or introduce security issues or, yeah. or things like yeah. that um the, yeah, but there's not really a great alternative that comes to mind. Um, I mean, like we can apps, make it. You can't. We really... can make it non-opaque. Uh, have, have yeah. some. Uh, uh, it's it's not something that we. So we only had one feedback about that. But I just wanted to run the idea by, uh, yeah. by you. So the other um, the other thing that I would say, uh, you know, Felix config, it's per node hmm. capability, sort of creates a lot of more recent thinking about how mm. APIs should be written. Um, I might consider using something like a resource with a selector, depending on what this config is. Um, mm. You know, I think we see a lot of users with Felix config in particular, uh, also PHP config. Um, want to be able to apply a config to like a particular rack. Um, mm. which can become tedious if you're creating a distinct one for each node in that rack, when really what you mm. want to do is just select all of the nodes in that rack and apply the config. Mm. Um, Good. So yeah, that's that's my thought on that for now. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, Lance, I think you might be physically muted or unplugged. Hello? Oh, better. Yes. Physically muted. <laughs> so you're suggesting config would be more like an IP pool type object rather than a Felix config object? I think so, depending on what is actually going into this thing. Um, you know, obviously, if the types of config we want to expose don't make sense for more than a single node, like if it's mm -hmm. including the precise IP address or something mm -hmm. of that node, then it's harder to do with a selector. Um, but 
just wanted to put it out there as something to consider. Okay. Uh, you also, uh, back on the point about the operator, do you know what um, what the main objections are to that, just so we can maybe think about how to shave those edges off? Um, operator, I, I, I recall, um, so I think one of the objection was, uh, there, there was a use case of starting without IP pools and creating them after startup. And that was not really supported by, uh, sorry if I recall correctly, but that's more of a bug than a, a design a design thing. Mm -hmm. And the other one was, uh, I think it's, it's related to the same story of uh, having multiple uh, configuration for different nodes as operator is it's not very flexible on the way it creates. Uh, it, it it interacts with Calico VPP. Um, yeah. Uh, it was easier to to just say yeah, let's take the YAML and and apply it uh, in that way. Um, but um, but maybe thinking a bit more about config sources might uh, just allow to escape that um, that problem. And uh, yeah, if you, you don't have to deploy multiple uh, demon sets, if you have a, a per node um, config source. Yeah, this, um... yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the things about the operator is that um, I think it works fine for the 98, 99% of mm, people. Yeah. And then it's a little bit intentionally rigid and yeah. that mm. can, uh, push some people towards the manifest escape route yeah. escape hatch um mm. i will say uh for the ip pool one the latest release does add some new capabilities there so the operator does support um starting up with no ip pools and managing them out of band okay. and it That's also supports point. creating multiple ip pools and managing them through the installation resource which uh, wasn't the case until recently. Okay, oh, very neat. Uh, thanks for the heads up. Um, Casey. Yep. Is that going to be on three twenty nine? That's actually in three twenty eight. So that's 320. already released. Okay. Thank you. Um. Uh, cool. Uh. Thanks for that update, Nathan. Um, Eric, Lance, Reza, any topics on your mind, things you wanted to talk about? Uh, not exactly for the check-ins, but I did have, well, I was gonna, I put in the hot issues uh, category into the doc. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there was an issue that, I guess it came in a couple days ago. Um, it was around, it's around the, um, Un uninstallation uh, and finalizers. Um, oh, thrilling. I, yeah, I know you've. I uh, fairly recently did some update that yeah. stuff most recently. Is that even released yet? I believe it is, yeah. Okay. So, I don't know. Um, so I, I request then... a little bit more info on it because I'm not 100% clear if they just deleted everything or not. Um, I mean, the way the direction, what the steps that they wrote doesn't suggest that, but I... uh, You know, there were two, there were two things that I did recently. So um, it may be that one of them's released and one of them isn't. Um, so there was one, one thing where, um, we had this weird ordering dependency between deleting stuff and the API server being deleted by the operator. And it interacted poorly with this other bug about using duplicate UIDs that resulted in garbage collection getting stalled out in the controller manager. And it was like this complicated web of stuff that um, 
got fixed by a series of, of changes, including uh, a fix to our API server and some better ordering logic in the operator to make sure that we waited for the API server to be deleted before deleting other things. I think that's been released. And so if you uninstall Calico now, like using Helm uninstall or something like that, it will um, properly clean up all the resources and succeed. There was a second thing that we noticed, which is that if you delete resources without doing that official uninstall, right? If you don't delete the installation, but instead delete the CNI plugin service account, for example, that would get stuck in a terminating state because we didn't have a special case to say, yeah, if you're deleting this, but you're not deleting Calico as a whole, remove the finalizer. Um, so I also wrote some code to handle that. And that I think that handles things like users may want to verify that everything's correct by like deleting the Calico system namespace and letting the operator recreate it, right? Which is not something we tell them to do, but I think is a reasonable thing that people expect to work. Um, and that previously wasn't working. And that's the fix that I'm, I'm not sure has actually made it into a release yet. I have to go check on the status of that one. Um, so if this is like something or somebody deleting our resources and expecting them to come back, that might not have a release fix yet. I, I mean, what, what, what the bug they submitted suggests is that they, it's, they said attempt to remove Calico via the default installation object. So it makes it sound like they did what yeah. I would consider the right way to do it. Um, but I, I requested clarification on that. What it, what exactly they removed there? Yeah. All right. Yeah. There's a link in the notes. Yeah. I guess I will assign this to me. And try to figure out what's going on. So that's all I had. I didn't have anything else. I just, I just, that was only because I came across that this morning, too. Yep, that's a good one. I see our buddy uh, Steve uh, yeah. thumbs up it. That's nice. I haven't seen his name for a while. But he was definitely on similar issues a while yeah. ago. Yeah. Yep. So that's all I, all I have. I think. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that one up. Um, I had hoped that this saga was over. Yeah. It sounds like we may have yet another chapter. <laughs> Um, cool. I don't think I have anything else. Um, I'm happy to cut this one a little bit short today if, uh, if there's no other topics. Do we have any heroes? A great question. Do we? I am unprepared on that. Oh, okay. I, know I have seen a whole bunch of PRs coming in from new contributors recently, which I think is great. Um, yeah, ranging from like pretty small fixes to um, docs fixes and, you know, a much larger changes to Felix, which uh, I think is pretty cool. But I am remiss in my duty to note down their names and shout them out here. We'll get them next time then. Yeah. Cool. Well, enjoy the summer air, everybody. And uh, stay, stay cool if that's your thing. <laughs> I will be seeking out the heat myself because it's too cold in San Francisco. 
Here's the world's smallest violin playing just for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming, everybody. We'll see you in roughly a month's time. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Enjoy the summer. Bye.